Myth is an idea that can be found anywhere within many areas of contemporary thought. It also has an impact on literary criticism. And myth always has been a part of literature. From Homer to Milton to Endymion. Fry here distinguishes two divisions of literary works. First is fictional which comprises of whatever tells a story. Novel, short story, drama, narrative poem, anything. And second is thematic which comprises of lyrics or essays where a story is not there. His study is focused on fictional division of literature. So here he will only talk about lit part of literature which consists of some form of story. Most of the criticism deals with analysis of a work of art as a stable and concrete object. Like uh, when we study Hamlet, we see it as a complete object. That Hamlet is about this, Hamlet is about that. But it often ignores the sense of progression that the reader feels. Now this persuasion of continuity can be logical or pseudological or psychological. But it, it is something that makes us complete the work. We read first page, we read first chapter, then move on to next. That happens with this continuation. Fry argues that there are different rhythmic patterns at different levels in a work of literature. Every single unit of it contributes to the forward momentum of the work. It makes us aware of the story or plot of the work. So this is how we came to know plot of a novel. Aristotle says that plot is life and soul of tragedy. Largely fiction that means character are secondary and exist only to serve the purpose of plot. But when we think about a work of literature, after completing it, character is the first thing we remember. Like after reading Othello, Diego is the first character that comes to our mind. We do not remember the plot of Othello chronologically, but it becomes some disjointed series of scenes that is impressed on our mind. Plot seems to be blurry, so our memory of continuous progression of a work later becomes discontinuous. Even when we reread it, it is not for plot, but for a theme or character. So it becomes our focus rather than plot. Now theme also can take different form. If we discuss a theme, we may say something about the plot. Allegorically, we can make theme very different from it. For example, Macbeth is about a man who murders king in order to be next king and faces the consequences. Paragolically, we can say that Macbeth is about ambition and guilt playing role in a political game of power gaining. Third conception of theme is of mythos as per Fry. A theme can be viewed as unity, where your smaller elements regroups themselves, resulting in a new center of attention. Uh, it is like when we first read Harry Potter, we are so engrossed in the journey of Harry to Hogwarts. But after completing it, we remember it around thematic centers, like all the scenes with death or danger of death, all the scenes with curiosity and sense of wonder, or the characters of Dumbledore or Snape. A novel always reaches to a point in the end in its progression where 
the wall story becomes clear to the reader. Fry says that the comedy has a U-shaped plot and tragedy an inverted U-shaped plot. That means in a comedy, things fall down at first but at last it becomes upward and the opposition is often found in tragedy. So this point at last where the story becomes very clear is the phenomenon of recognition. It can happen through the unity of theme it manifests. An object can come handy. Like Philosopher's Stone in is such object in the first Harry Potter book. Recognition can come as any form like identity of a murderer or revelation of a hidden truth, something like that. Fry questions what happens to the unity of theme in a work which are not strictly controlled like comedy. Imagination is not just a faculty of association because it only creates conventionalized, conventionalized art. Conventionalization means when storyteller doesn't have to produce a credible story. He doesn't have to look at the story and have to say that it is very true. He concentrate on its structure more than characters and that turns characters into imaginative projection larger than life. This is more often seen in folk tales. They are free from barriers of language and cultural mostly. But what they are, they are abstract story patterns free from everything. Folk tales are connected to other fiction like a series of changing structures. And that is why we often found some instances of folk tales into fiction. Even intellectual writers are interested in using them because he finds a ready-made structure of a a kind of abstract structure where the story is already told. He just have to modify it or change it. So he produces a distortion of realism as he focuses on structure. Now the case is very different for popular lit literature. It has all the focus in action and plot and theme are very close together. So when recognition comes, nothing is left to read it again. Like a detective story, identity of murderer is a recognition. So once we know that who murdered the whatever murder has taken place in the story, we will not read it again. Now, reverse is also possible where action submits to characterization. While reading a story, we have two kinds of recognition. First is continuous recognition of fidelity to experience. That means little details tells us that, okay, this is happening, this is happening. Harry is now going into his room. Now he is in the class, that kind of. And second is of the knowledge of the whole structure. Okay, so this is how it all happened. That kind of knowledge. Now Fry comes to his second point. Myth. Myth is also an abstract story pattern as it takes place beyond any cultural bondage. A myth never has a particular time period or a background to which we have to see them. Characters can be whatever storyteller wants them to be. So naturally fiction writers would be interested in this kind of abstract pattern also. Because it provides a ready-made structure. James Joyce uses myth in his Ulysses which is based on the myth of Odysseus. 
but myth are very different from folk tale that they are believed to be really happen so myth are larger than life still we believe that it may have happened somewhere in the past they are part of a series of myths so they seem like a part of a tradition they are not isolated they are always a part of a series like uh, myth of flood myth of paradise lost that kind of thing myths are a kind of art so they imitates nature in human form they make gods behave like humans when myths come together they form a mythology often presenting gods in human forms it always have a complete structure with commentary on the existent of humans no mythology is without this kind of commentary even it is about gods and kings it always comments something about the conditions of normal humans because whoever had told this myths were normal humans while assimilating the nature of human form myth uses two principles first is analogy that is a similarity between features of two things uh, like cycle of sun with cycle of life and uh, that identity in this is the second we identify myths in the stories myths then merge merges with literature even teaching of literature needs to take history and society's beliefs and myths into account when we are reading or teaching paradise lost we have to first know what the puritan society was like what was milton's education and what is exactly the myth of paradise lost in christianity now structural principles of myth become structural principles of literature as well rising and falling moments in myths are echoed in comedy or tragedy study of genre and conventions provide links of connection between myth and literature so this is how myth which are part of a different system called mythology or mythology becomes part of literature by genre and conventions but an author has to have clear understanding of myth he is using or it will be something very very different from the myth there is always a conflict between plausible story and requirements of literary form that means every convention in a plot is more or less a little mad they do not tell anything about real life but exist to tell the story so the little parts where the story moves forward the literary devices like uh, mistaken identity in most of the comedy plays is a kind of storytelling device pride then says that mythology is a system which has many myths residing within it a work of literature resides within a canon of literature but they corresponds on similar terms in conclusion fry sums up that when we read a work of literature we see reproduction of life into pages and recognize it but the unity of the original experience is not captured if we study theme then we may found it also belongs to convention there we realize that literature is reconstructed mythology and it is a complex body of verbal creation so with this essay 
नॉर्थ ऑफ फ्राई मेक्स कनेक्शन बिटवीन मिथ्स एंड वट इज सिस्टम ऑफ मिथोलॉजी वट इज द ओरिजिन ऑफ मिथोलॉजी एंड हाउ इट इज कनेक्टेड टू लिटरेचर